Indiana Jones, Indiana Jones. It's a podcast about Indiana Jones. Every movie, one minute at a time. Welcome back to the Indiana Jones Minute. This is the podcast where the film Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull and the Ground Beneath Our Feet give way one minute at a time. I am Tom Taylor. I'm Pete Mummert, and I feel like there's going to be a a little Jerry Porter song coming up in this one, like a get up, move, ox, move. We'll have to see. (laughs) Oh, wow. (laughs) I'm the intern Jerry Porter, who apparently sings. Sometimes you've been known to. Well. And uh, over here, we've got our guest, Mr. Dave Arsenault. Welcome, Dave. Hi, thank you. It's good to have you with us. You're an old pal well, from uh, the internet and uh, all of our, you know... From uh, Oakland, Alameda County Coliseum. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, you bet. <laughs> it's an honor to be here. Awesome. Um, we're sorry you have to be here for such a kind of nothing minute, but what are you going to do? We're going to make it awesome and fun. You'll see. Sounds great. There You'll are see. no nothing minutes, Tom. I'm sorry. Yeah, just just uh, you know, nothing podcasters. You can't make uh, gold out of uh, whatever. That's a free. Okay, yeah. But here we go. Here's what. Here's the raw materials we have to work with. This is minute ninety nine, and it begins with uh, sand gushing out of the obelisk as it begins to transform, and it ends with the gang scrambling down the slowly retreating spiral staircase. I I want to like this minute. I want to like this scene so much because mm-hmm. it seems like this is just like a majestic moment and you stop and all of the weight of the movie just hits you and you're you're like tears are in your eyes and you're like my god they finally got there they (laughs) found it this is it and it means nothing this this leaves me (laughs) completely ice cold It it has no emotional weight it means nothing like there's this has nothing to do with anything that's happened before we don't know anything about what this is it's just like a video game puzzle. It's like, okay, they got to solve this puzzle, and then they're inside. Yeah. That was the cutscene where the thing happens for a while, and you go, you know, you try to skip it, but you can't, and uh, you got to wait for the game to start again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it is. I mean, I, I, if there's if there's any emotional, I I don't I don't know if Indiana Jones is feeling this, but for for him, I had the sense like watching all the sand gush out of the sides. We talked about this a little bit last time, I think. But um, does Indy have any kind of like, oh? All the sand is coming out. All of this, like I was standing there in, in the Chachapoyan Temple. I'm trying to like, oh, maybe this is five grains too many. Oh, no, am I balancing this right? <laughs> the secret here is just to get rid of all the sand, like more sand than I could ever dream of. This is such a relief. This is but, a... Yeah, You know, what I'm wondering is, does this contraption work the way that it's supposed to work? That's a really good question. Yeah, I don't so, know okay, if it is, so I don't know why. It, yeah, so, okay, you come up and you're supposed to pull a skull face off. Mm-hmm. And then if you do that, then all the sand comes out. And you get this sort of, I don't know, it's almost like this reverse entropy moment where, you know, you read about, like, what is the second law of thermodynamics and entropy. <laughs> and they're always like, well, do you ever see an egg come together? <laughs> no, you always see, you know, your, uh, eggs only drop and they fall apart. You know, they, they crack and they, you know, they, they don't ever go from the, you know, being scrambled to being collected and in, back into the shell again. <laughs> right. But in this moment, we see that it's like this thing. I'll see uh, it. I certainly it, it, like it better when you say it that way, actually. Well, thank you, Peter. You thought I was just good for songs. <laughs> <laughs> sing, ca- Gary, but sing. It, 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 it like, it, it anti-collapses. <laughs> oh, there you go. Oh, it does. It kind of, it kind of, it all comes together in this sort of reverse entropy thing that, 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 that we think about. Like, it's, a, it's like they always say, you know, like, now, if you could watch time backwards, everything would come together. That's what this looks like. It's happening that this kiosk mm-hmm. or whatever is coming together. And then the sand pours down or out and it creates this uh, chasm beneath them. And then they fall and something that is really just like an itch that I cannot scratch at all is they all fall directly straight down and then they cut to Indy and he's nowhere near the place that he fell down, but he's still lying down like he fell. Uh, like he fell into some stairs. Mm -hmm. It is. Well, it's like, it's like he fell 
straight down and then over. Yeah, yeah. It was really exactly. windy in there or something. Yeah, it was really windy. <laughs> and then I'm just wondering, is this... So is the contraption like, congratulations, you've solved it. So here's... Who is this for? Right. It, it, it seems like you should be... If you've done it right, you shouldn't then be in mortal peril. Yeah. Yes. Like with the things yeah, disappearing. I had the, I had the same question. Like, do, do the aliens want the skull back? So you, you get in there and then, great, we're going to take the stairs away from you. Yeah. So, right. you know, here's yeah. the puzzle. And then all of a sudden you, you get in and you have to escape uh, a... Uh, a retreating staircase that seems like completely out to lunch in terms of if yeah. the whole purpose was Returno uh, all the way from, uh, from the jail cell. Bring yeah. the cell back, but hey, you're going to have to fall down a pit. I didn't even think about that. That sucks. Like they're asking him to bring the skull back and then they're trying to kill him when he brings it back. Right. That's amazing, Dave. I never even thought about that. Just kidding. Uh, it's, just, it's, just, it's just like uh, when you walk into a Verizon store. Like yeah, you see the this. ad, the, yeah, they see the billboard and they're like, oh, just trade your iPhone back in. <laughs> Returno. Oh. And you do and You got a bill for $952. I thought they were going to, what the hell? They're supposed to give me money. Money for this thing. Falling down the stairs now. Yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> do you hear that? No, but I goddamn see it. <laughs> uh, run. Yeah, everybody run. run. It kind of so reminds I, me. I've never lived in a house with a burglar alarm, but it kind of reminds. Oh, I shouldn't say that because now it's going to break into my house. But uh -oh. it kind of reminds <laughs> me of. Um, like when, when you visit someone and they've got a burglar alarm and you go into their house and then they run to the panel and then they have to really <laughs> fast, like they have to really quickly type in the code oh maybe there was something they were supposed to do to keep yeah. the stairs from yeah, yeah. maybe who knows but I, it's you weird because it does seem like a legitimately like the disappearing stairs seems like a solid indiana jones kind of peril thing but yeah it should be like it should be triggered but like it, it, it seems like they did the right thing to open this thing kind of although they fall through the sand and that's how they get in there that seems kind of tricky too i eh, forget it i take back what i was gonna say it doesn't make any sense <laughs> well okay so so are you so is what should happen i'm just imagining either the what's their name again the the, the local people the Uga. The, Uga. the Uga. either the Uga or the aliens like when the Uga come to the top of this are they like all right hey look before anybody touches anything we're gonna grab a face then the sand's going to take us down. And then watch me. Immediately, <laughs> we're going to have to go quickly down the right. stairs. I know the guy who was the architect behind this. Yeah. But you start the second you land, you, you'll yeah. make Yeah. Or that's a, is, it a, is it a door or is it a trap? I don't know. And then once you get in there and come back out, however you do that, then fill the whole thing up with sand again. Yeah. Push those beams back down. Kind of reset and, and, and the whole thing. And, and we're in like a damn rainforest. <laughs> right. So where are you? Yeah. I mean, where, yeah. where all the sand. That was sand. all the sand. Maybe they recycle it. Somebody shipped it in once. Yeah, that's recycle true. recycle that same sand. That's possible. Or maybe it's all from, like, dry sand. Oh, maybe. yeah, there you go. Oh, maybe yeah, the dry so sand. Away, you, yeah. Maybe the dry sand was just sort of a foreshadowing. <laughs> How could be? Is the dry sand pit connected to this? Oh, maybe when the like oh. <laughs> when the dry sand when they get sucked into the dry sand, that sand's emptying and filling this up. Yeah, that's oh yeah, it's a cycle <laughs> of sand. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure that's it. <laughs> yeah, here we go. Well, I I have a question. Um, did did the Uga people, or did I guess did the aliens or whoever these trans-dimensional beings are, did they build this before the first Mesoamerican temples? And so, like all of these temples in Mexico, you know, Central America, with all their complex, you know, iconography and symbolism and stuff, are literally just cargo cult copies of this, or is this a copy of and mis a misunderstanding of Mesoamerican temples? Hmm. Oh, interesting. Or do you, do you think like yeah, like the 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 Mesoamericans, the the Mayans, or the Olmecs are like, nah, man, that temple was stupid. 
They would totally <laughs> say that. They're talking they're about this one. Yeah. They're like, we're not going to do that. We're not yeah. going to. It's like all the sand fell and then they had the whole thing with the stairs. <laughs> Listen, here's what we're going to do. We're just going to do astronomy. OK, people. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty. It's useful. Yeah. And then we'll have <laughs> like, a, you know, props. that's what yeah. we're going to do. And you know what? If you, if you bring up sand, we're going to execute you on the top. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Your head will go bouncing down, hit every step. It's going to be great. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I have like, something to say about those beams. Oh. The, I, I, for some reason, I remember seeing this in the theater the first time and think, "Oh, that's cool. I like the, the 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 intricateness of the of the thing happening. All the sand comes out and the things go up." But this time watching it, I'm like, I don't know why. I kind of get why that center piece is sinking in because I guess the sand is now making room for it or something by by leaving. But then I don't know why the beams, the four you know beams, are are going up all of a sudden to meet in the middle. There's like no, there's no apparatus that I can see that's making that happen, and that annoys me. I want, I want it to be all kind of, you know, Rube Goldberg kind of. I'm guessing cool. there's like a really heavy counterweight that drags them down, like pulls, like it provides force, like it's pulling down, mm. and that downward force is pulling those beams inwards, and then they kind of, because they're moving inwards, they so. kind of tilt up. Yeah, there's the pillar that's in the middle of the pit, so it would stand at that the inner column, just sliding within that. Yeah, but I think that's what bothers me is that you you don't you you see the hinge at the base of each pillar is above where that center tube is. Like you almost <laughs> want to say like, oh, what, okay, when it hits the tube, that just sort of shoves it up. That makes sense, but that's not what happens. It happens before that, if you know what I'm saying. Right, right, right. Yeah. Well, I did have a question about that point. Um, as it's going up, you see Indy smile a little bit now is that a like hey i'm doing archaeology smile <laughs> or i can't believe this is working smile or you know what is he doing at that point as he's like noticing that it, it's actually working i watched that like 10 times because i was trying to figure that out too <laughs> and i think it's a, i'm looking into the sun squinting smile <laughs> yeah. what's happening someone tell me what's happening <laughs> Now is that the 4 30 sun or the 7 yeah oh, the 7 30 sun yeah 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 <laughs> Still is. It's like there's. It's like there. There's no time has elapsed. Yeah. The well, that no, that a thousand years ago. Sun, time it. has elapsed, but like you said, we're dealing with entropy and we're moving backwards in time. Apparently, so. <laughs> Maybe yeah. yeah. Maybe it's just like the the but right. But it's between like four thirty two and like five seventeen. <laughs> it just keeps going back. <laughs> yeah, and they keep forth. going back and forth. Mm -hmm. Well, what do they like? They say uh, all moments in time exist simultaneously. You know, like the past, present, oh, yeah. future all exist in the same. So maybe they're just like moving back and forth. That's like, what the Trail Famadorians say. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, this is a very. I mean, it's it's it, it's it passes the Crystal Skull litmus test, which is this. <laughs> th there's something about this that is Indiana Jones like, mm -hmm. and yet it doesn't make sense, and it's. Uh, poorly put together but there is moss on stone and <laughs> right uh, yeah and it's kind of dirty and dusty everything's and dirty dark. and dusty kind of and toilet, there's like toilet lid scraping sound yes <laughs> yeah. and it's a big you know moving rock pieces yeah. that have vines and lichens on them and mm -hmm. so you're like yes so that that's but but it makes no sense upon uh yeah Second it's, look. It's, it's like one of Tom's Christmas cards. Like someone just made a mad, like an Indiana Jones Mad Lib. <laughs> and they just filled in yeah. all the. Yeah. And it's like in a little bit, we're going to see, like, that there's, I, I think, I think I remember the scene coming up where there's like a big, like, you know, Charles Foster Kane room full of, like, you know, Mona Lisa's and things and, you know, ancient artifacts and everything. It's like they just have a collection of Indiana Jones stuff and they kind of put it together. <laughs> oh, it'd be kind of like a tripwire here and a mossy stone here and a corpse of the I get, you know, as you here. say, if you're not doing the, you're not doing the movie a minute at a time, uh, you know, you go, sure. Sure. You hear the toilet lid sound and you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I believe it. I look before that uh, toilet lid sound, the initial screech of that stone kind of sounds like a, a an attenuated blaster from star wars like ben burke really oh yeah it does initial oh, yeah, wow. sound like pretty pretty cool and if there's anything positive out of that minute that little blaster sound is definitely something that uh sounds like it makes sense oh and, yeah uh, that's awesome yeah, yeah. that's, that's cool yeah i'm amazed that we don't like after watching those columns come up 
And we see they're going to meet in the middle, and they do, but we don't actually see them actually connect with like a big satisfying thud or anything like that. I'm kind of amazed that doesn't happen. You get a little bit of a thud. I'll, I mean, yeah. you hear the thud, but you don't see... Yeah. Like, they just touch. You don't see, like, the satisfying yeah. kind of whomp of them all coming yeah, together. Yeah, you're right. It's a little hmm. vexing, but I'll, yeah. I'll get over it. <laughs> I, this is for you, Gerald. I guess, Tom, you'll appreciate this, too. I don't know if this is okay. for you, Dave, but uh, is that a panty on that skull's head? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, skull, hang a on a minute. On I'm glad you talk, you're talking about second 51, <laughs> <laughs> which I thought... That to me that looks like a cyclops. Oh. No. We, oh, I, I see what you're talking about. Yeah, it looks like it's like there's a yeah. one eye in the middle and its mouth is open. Yeah. And it, and it, and it looks. I see what it, it's. It could be that's a panty. Weird. A panty on a cyclops. Sure. Uh, that, sure was, that was that was a is. raising Arizona reference just for you too. I appreciate that, that very much. But it also kind of looks like he kind of looks like the like the monkey brain head. It does. Oh yeah, yeah. It's yeah. He's got like a really uh, I don't know deep, strong brow that is kind of making him look like a cyclops. I think. But then it's like a jester hat. <laughs> like there's like a ball uh, comes on the side. Like a yeah. I don't know. Did you have any thoughts on this guy, Dave? I'm just scrolling right to second fifty one there. Or like yeah fifty fifty one. Oh, yeah, it's well it's oh. it's a body that's draped over a, a spike, so his head's leaning back. Yeah. You see two arms. Yeah. Or like some sort of Oh, it is that like what a wooden it is? peg leg. Yeah, oh, but I'm still seeing a cy- I'm seeing seeing an upside down cyclops I, Gary, because he's like yeah, the, he's like on his comment. back on the spike. Yeah. Oh. And you see his mouth and then below that it looks like one eye. Like one just <laughs> Oh what no! Yeah, that's, that's his mouth. Totally. The mouth is—it's the mouth, and then the nose. Yeah. And then the panty covers his eye, like half of one of his <laughs> eyes. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. Oh, oh. my gosh! So, you know, this is great. It's like one of those optical illusions. <laughs> yeah. I see, see an old lady. I see. It's a war shock yeah. test. Yeah. I, I see, see a bunny. <laughs> 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 it also kind of looks so like the the spaceship in 2001 a space odyssey that well so, so is this supposed <laughs> to be a guy who found this is a guy who's impaled on a spike so is mm-hmm. this one of the uga or is this an alien no, this or guy is, looks like he's in a suit of armor he's like uh this is yeah, like maybe one of oriana's guys or something okay and all Max's right gonna come up to it next minute and say mm-hmm. something really yeah. weird. yeah so then it still asks the question, if that guy's in there, somebody yeah. would have opened this at one point and yep. then mm-hmm. put it all back together again <laughs> sure. so that they can all find it. It seems, uh, you know. Maybe that's all the perfect, Uga perfect do. Course. The Uga, like, you know, somebody comes in, they get killed, and the Uga's like, all right, for the next thousand years, we'll be filling this thing back up and uh, getting ready for the next <laughs> suckers to come along. That's what we do. And but we're was, happy was to this- do it. Was this person returning a skull, or was this person trying to take a skull? Is it like the leave a penny, take a penny thing? And the <laughs> yeah, <laughs> did he come after Oriana or something, or with him? Or yeah, like, yeah. Was this an Oriana buddy, or was this? I don't know. I mean, I if it's if it's not an Oriana guy, that means even more people showed up to that place. There was like a whole like parade going in and out of this place. Yeah, it's like it up or- with sand. Does Oriana you know? show up here and he's this, he sees this is Cortez? He's like this is Cortez. He was good. <laughs> As a competitor. He was very, very good. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's exactly that's it. Good. <laughs> yeah. Well, we should. I mean, we're jumping to conclusions. Dave, do you? I mean, do you probably have feelings about this movie and opinions, and we've probably steered you in one direction. But, but what is your what is your gut feeling about this movie? How how does it well, how does it hit you? I mean, as Jerry alluded to, if you watch it start to finish and you don't stop and think at any point it's a good two hours of <laughs> entertainment right and i think that's really what you're looking for and maybe that sure. was the whole purpose is just to be entertained for a couple hours they hit all of the uh you know the beats the checklist that you would expect with an indie movie and you know it's it's good it's not raiders it's not temple of doom by any means but mm-hmm. it, it's all right i mean i think the one note after watching the minute a few times that i i uh, came up with was that this minute kind of represents Crystal Skull in a nutshell, where mm. the, you, you find out that there's an Indy 4 coming out, and the pillars is your anticipation building up, and you got John Hurts and Kate Blanchett, Ray Winstone, and Karen <laughs> Allen. I'm like, this has got to be good. And then 
you see it and the rug is swept under you. You <laughs> fall down and you got to run. <laughs> yep, it's a, run it's a race to the bottom and you're going to lose no matter what. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, I mean, it's, it's kind of funny it's distilled in a minute what this two hours was. But, you know, at the end of the day, it's it's a fun family flick that you should enjoy as long as you don't stop uh, – Every minute. Now you tell us. Oh, that might be the best. <laughs> that might be the best synopsis I've heard yet of this movie. That I mean, is really good. It's, it's a yeah, fun perfect. family flick as long as you don't stop to look at it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. Are we just jerks that we like? You know, we you know we, we grew up on movies that you have to like define your life with, like Star Wars and Raiders and stuff. Like, are we just at the point where like we can't accept it if we're not going to like you know make a religion out of it? And that'll be our whole lives. Like Honestly, I think we, and... to a degree, I think we are. Okay. Because I but, think I think this work. I think this works is just like Dave said. Like Jerry, like it's just a fun kind of romp movie. It's fine. Yeah. But it's not. We build up this expectation of it because of what came but, before it. But 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 it's not like. It, okay, sure. Maybe we've changed. But look, the 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 movie itself can't be a sieve. <laughs> right. I mean, I, I, there yeah. needs to. I mean, like Raiders of the Lost Ark does have these, you know, a, a gravity and 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 it's shot well. And there's a, you know, what it is. There's as we always said, there's a danger. There's a danger. There, mm-hmm. There's a there's a, a bit of a, a somberness to Raiders that that uh, that we didn't really find in the other movies. Yeah. And and that's yeah. So maybe maybe there's a. Maybe that's one of the things that's. I, I know there's a lot of fake stuff that happens, but uh, you do feel the danger mm-hmm. in Raiders. Well, How, however, they made that happen. I, you you do you do feel you do feel the danger. I, I'll tell you one of the scarier parts is when he says like. I think they're on you know you know the they 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 uh, on the Bantu wind and they say like. I can't remember. He says it's something like, "Well, take the girl or whatever, and then we'll decide whether or not we're going to blow you out, your ship out of the water." Yeah. And I'm always like, "Ah, they might blow his ship." Yeah, out of probably going to blow his ship. Out <laughs> of the water. Yeah, I mean, he's deciding after, like, in ten minutes from now. Yeah. So even if everybody's fine, like, we're just sitting here on the deck, <laughs> <laughs> waiting to see if this guy pushes a button. That's how it feels. Mm-hmm. There's for some reason that is a visceral feeling. They might blow the ship out of the water. Well, well yeah. I think that that hits some things that the, you talk about Star Wars, Jerry. The first movie, so Raiders, that's the first time that we meet Indiana Jones. So we have no idea if he's going to mm-hmm. die at the end of this movie because there's, there's yeah. Temple of Doom hasn't come out yet. So that feeling of danger is because we don't know what's coming up next. Yeah. By the time Temple of Doom comes up, you you know it's Indiana Jones. He's going to be the hero. He's going to save the day. And then subsequent sequels, you know, it's the same formula. Indy's just going to save the day, and he's going to come out uh, at the other end of this. Yeah. But yeah. Raiders we had no idea. Yeah. Now that's twice you've referred to the indie movies, but you haven't referred specifically to Last Crusade. So now I'm curious about what your ranking is of the indie movies, Dave. Well. Uh, Temple of Doom would be number one because that was the first one that I nice. saw. Wow, interesting. And then it, and it's just that initial reaction. Uh-huh. And then yeah. Raider, Raiders, um, Last Crusade, and then uh, Crystal Skull. Okay, interesting. This is all raising a question for me because it, it sounds like, Jerry, you would like every movie in the Indiana Jones franchise to have a certain gravitas. And it sounds like Dave, maybe you would be happy if there were lots of movies in the Anna Jones franchise. Is it is it good if like is it better to have just one or two movies that you know are going to be good and not take any more chances, or is it better to make like twenty movies and maybe six of them are really good? I don't, you know they had that handshake deal to make three movies, yeah, for for you know like a decade or something. That's what we had. We had you know they they made the three movies. And that sort of made sense. Three is kind of the magic number, and you don't have to do three. If you do one, that's awesome. If you do two, that's fine too, I guess. But uh, I don't know. I mean, you know, we're we're in an age where there's like more 
Star Wars than there's ever been before, and it's just kind of like the, the hose is just open, like in the yard, and she's spilling <laughs> yeah. Star Wars everywhere, and it's getting all over everything, and it's seeping into the basement. And it's like, okay, so it's good and everything, but oh my gosh, what it does seem to cheapen it a little bit. Like it seems it like it does. It's a little it's less special, less valuable. All right, yeah. well, so hang on, and it if pulls take... farther and farther back from that little kernel of what you Im- of magic initially. Well, so loved. let me let yeah. me just pause it. So, so as an example, let's say Trader Joe's. You go into Trader Joe's and you're like, God, that looks great. They came up with somehow they put like, uh, you know, everything but the elote. And you're like, that's amazing. (laughs) And then you're like, wait a minute, there's everything but the bagel. That's great, too. And then you keep walking down the aisle and you're like, God damn, they got kefir and it's (laughs) strawberry flavored. And then they got like, you know, after a while, like, is 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 there anybody that has all the things that they make, let's say more than two more than three more than four or five whether it's a band or it, uh, it, you mm. know something on a menu and everything or almost everything is that good i wasn't thinking of trader joe's today <laughs> but when i shop around <laughs> trader joe's they do have yeah. a lot of great things mm-hmm. well here's here's an example that i think will shock you guys a lot that i'm bringing it up but how about the marvel cinematic universe which i personally mostly dislike see but they make like a million of them and they make mm-hmm. like 300 of them a year yeah but because they make so many of them they they keep coming out with new ones that make people like tom taylor cry and really hit home like they hit <laughs> right. that marvel emotional gland and he's really really touched and happy about it and i wonder sometimes would it be better if indiana jones made a movie every single year and we would have had seven really great indiana jones movies at this point and you know like 23 yeah. bad ones I don't know though. Yeah. Like I th- I th- I th- oh, go ahead, Dave. Well, I was just going to say it seems that as Marvel, as the Marvel universe has matured over the last decade plus, you know, the, some of the latest releases, they don't spend any time kind of exp- over explaining the backstory. You either already know mm-hmm. this character through your own nerdery. Uh-huh. And you're excited to see this movie because it's, it's exactly what you're looking for. And they're not taking any time to, you know, explain every beat. You know, there's no mm. Mm. how Indy gets the whip. There's no how Indy gets <laughs> uh-huh. the scar. Uh-huh. And, you know, they literally take your hand and walk you through it. And I think that maybe that's what we've seen with Star Wars and in, in uh, subsequent indie films is that eventually they just walk your, they, they walk you through every single step. That's a great right? point. And I think yeah. that, that, that would be the, the difference if they just threw an Indiana Jones movie and just like, here's the story. We don't need to explain why he met Mac in Indy Five, and if they do <laughs> right, that, that's right. going to be terrible. <laughs> right. Yeah. So I, much I don't of need... so much of new Star Wars is explaining Star yeah. Wars to you, or yeah. filling in holes left by Star Wars. I I don't need to know how they lost the bagel along coming up with that season. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Maybe it started on the bagel, and there's some dude who's just. <laughs> who's you know taking a butter knife and like scraping all off the, the, the <laughs> salt, and salt i don't need to know it i you know i know the marvel thing has done ex- exceptionally well uh, certainly over the years mm-hmm. but there's also I, I and i've seen very few of them although i did see spider-man 3 and i thought it was very well done um I know that a lot of people say that, like, oh, Green Lantern's stupid, or like some of them are tepid. That's and, not MCU, know. Jerry. You're embarrassing us. It's DC. <laughs> 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 Whatever it is, there's, there's one that no, I, I, I hear from that people like, don't yeah, care as much. People about, go, yeah. no, nah, I don't really care. Right. That's true. There are a few, but I mean, for the most part, they're all uh, absolutely solid and uh, okay. You know, all right. They just all keep right. churning them out, and it's a new thing. It's like it's not like they took. It's not like there was a Captain America movie in like 1978 and like, hey, let's go nuts with Captain America now. They just went nuts with everything right from the get go from, you know, ironically, the same year that this movie came out. Like Iron Man came out and they just never stopped. And, you know, it's kind of what you expect and it kind of works. Like, I don't know if you could like they're, they're doing that now with Star Wars kind of, but it doesn't feel right. It feels like. Wait, would you guys settle down with the Star Wars? They're supposed to be one of these every three or four years. But see, I and feel like that nuts. could work with indie because you could have Indiana Jones movies every few years. You could have spinoff movies with other characters because there's so many things to go after on Earth and so many cultures you could investigate. 
Yeah. You know what? I I hate this question, Pete. Me too. I <laughs> hate this <laughs> question. Yeah, it's because you know what? It's it's like a, a self vivisection. Yeah. Where you know you're alive and you're pulling out your own organs and you're looking at them. And you're going, of course, as yeah. a as a twelve year old, I want as much Indiana Jones as possible. Right. So the but answer I also is want yes. as many Malomars and Kit Kats <laughs> and chocolate but, shit. But and this I might also, be a legitimate I, question going forward. Like Indy Five, maybe maybe. May lead to Indy thirty by the time we're dead. But that, but 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 in a way that means that like, does more have to equal worse? That that I guess it that's what you're saying. No, philosophically, it have to... does more have to be worse because they're watered down? No, but I'm that, I'm saying that if there are more, there's there's a better chance that some of them are going to be really sublime and good, and there may be even some that approach or surpass the original. I don't I don't want my movies to be a numbers game. I don't want to, you know, I want to, you did Raiders and it was awesome. So do 500 more and see if any of them are as good as Raiders. And, you no, know, ma- no them make them as good as Raiders. Well, they don't, that's the thing. They don't set out to make a dumb movie or a bad movie or an unsatisfying do movie. Do it, Steven, do it. <laughs> do it, George, <laughs> do it. <laughs> it, it, almost, it. It almost seems like they, they started out with that formula because the sequel to Raiders isn't a sequel. It's technically a prequel. Yeah. But right. They don't treat yeah. it that way. They just treat it as an indie story. So they use the character, throw them mm-hmm. in a, an adventure and it works fine. So to yeah. Pete's point, you know, they could just, okay, he's chasing after whatever, an artifact in Antarctica for Indy 19 and it could work. It'll be yeah. silly, but it could certainly work uh, if the story is told right. Uh, who well, knows? And they could, they could do it James Bond style. Like Indy could be you know, a woman, and he could be a robot, and he could be, you know, whatever. They could just, maybe not a robot, but you, I mean, you could keep <laughs> doing different, like you could just, you don't have to stay within the strictures of the original. I mean, they could do a movie from the idol's point of view, and uh, we can see how that works out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, certain, it's like Star Wars. At a certain point, you're like, oh, Star Wars is so huge. There's so, so much of the galaxy. But then after a while, you're like, oh, you know what I really like, though? I like Luke Skywalker, Han Solo, and Princess Leia <laughs> on the Death Star trying to get out of there and stuff. That's what I like. The You know, yes, you could do a movie about the idol. You could do a movie about Belloc. You could do a movie about Sala. But like, oh, wait, where, are you, where are you guys going? I, I was here for Indiana Jones. This one guy here in this adventure. That's what I really love. I guess, I guess what I'm hoping for is that they get, like, it's about our Earth. It's about our world. Like, Star Wars isn't about our world. It's all a made-up world. But yeah, Indiana Jones turning is... turning into, like, lesser... St- I don't know. There's, there's like, a lot of, like, globetrotting adventures and stuff, and not all of them are very good. I know some people... Well, this is what's hard. Like it's, is there a maturity level in here? Because on Halloween night, when you're 10, you're, you're never going, you know, oh, I've gotten enough candy. <laughs> right. you're always like yeah. i, I should have there there were three more houses before i hit the end of the block and my mom made me turn around and go back home or whatever we you know we had to stop or whatever it happened it started raining and it sucked but i did not get enough candy and i could eat as much as i want right now and it's not enough you're just it's sort of insatiable but then as you get older you're like, you know, you have a Kit Kat and you're like, oh, that was kind of fun and the style was cool. And then you have a Snickers yeah. and you're like, oh, I'm a little woozy. It's fine. <laughs> but, I mean, and then you have a pal. That you, and, you, you and Tom are like calcified old men. Like you're just completely yeah. sour. I'm calcified. Here's what's weird. I'm calcified <laughs> about the stuff that I loved as a kid. Like I, I, I want to keep that sacred and stuff. And part of why I maybe love the MCU and don't care how much they do of it and I can't get sick of it is because... I came to it as an adult, oh, yeah. and it's not like sacred to me or anything. It's just a fun. Th- I'm not even like sacred about the comic books or anything. I don't really know them that well, so it's like yeah. if they stray from that, I'm not furious, and I don't get all bent out of shape and stuff. And you know, whatever they do is good as long as it's you know well done. And so far, it has been. And, and, and well, P- Peter, sorry, sorry. you know, well, I prefer ossified. <laughs> 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 What were you about to say, Dave? Oh, I was going to say that maybe the difference between indie Star Wars and uh, the Marvel Universe is that for the, you know many many of us, Star Wars is exactly that: Han, Luke, Leia, Chewie, mm-hmm. yeah. Falcon. That that's Star Wars. And then you know, indie is Indy, Sala, uh, Brody, and yeah. um, and Marion. But Marvel, like the Marvel Universe, there's so many different characters with so many fleshed out stories that they can just keep telling stories, you know, ad nauseum. Yeah. And you never really get sick of it because you know that there's always another story. Yeah. But with Star Wars, eventually you run out of 
like primary characters to tell stories up and then it's just it literally sounds made up even though the original characters were made up in the first place <laughs> right. that's not what happened it doesn't fit, but it doesn't fit within the, the universe because you already have a preconceived notion of what those four or five characters are yeah. anything that strays from that path doesn't feel like it's home but, what, right. but what, you know marvel began as comic books so so mm-hmm. you're used to this um I don't know, I guess these, this coterie of, of characters that are yeah. going out and they each do a different thing. And that dude, you know, does stuff with ice and she's really good with fire. I don't know. Maybe it's DC, whatever. But the point <laughs> is there, you know, that's that's you, you begin with all these different characters and they each have their own stories and narratives. Whereas, you know, Indiana Jones is did not begin as a comic book like, oh, here's Belloc and here's Sala and right. here's Indy. And they're they should have made know. a Katanga movie right after Raiders and then right after that do a Sala <laughs> mm-hmm. movie. And then you mm-hmm. just you prime the audience for expecting that. And then, we, you know, it'd be 70. Movies <laughs> the bottom line is, it. look, you, you want more. You always want more, but you don't want it to be attenuated and you don't want to sure as hell don't want it to feel like less. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. Took us a long way to get there. Which I think we were already at. I think we already knew that. Uh, well, speaking of wanting more. Oh. Uh, this coming in over the wire, just in from Professor Christy Porter. Um, which is a better trap, this one or the Chachampoyan pedestal? <laughs> is anybody gonna that. argue this one i mean really well i don't know i think this was much more satisfying okay that's, a, that's an excellent point as to what we're like if this if raiders came out now people might be saying well how is it the thing sank a little bit and now there's darts shooting out of the thing i don't get it what's going on <laughs> that, that, would, that, that would ties into the actual plot and it, it feels like yeah i just feel like this one doesn't feel like it has anything to do with anything it really is just like a hodgepodge lodge of indie tropes and stuff. Yeah, yeah. They don't really make sense. No. Right. The Raiders trap is pretty linear. You know what's happening from start to finish. Whereas this, you go from one puzzle to something that is okay. This is here now. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. Right. Now Would this here. have been better if, like, Mac, or maybe even Ox had had been carrying. You know, they they wound up with say, um, I don't know, like stilts. And Indy was going down the stairs, and he was like, throw me the skull, and I'll throw you the stilts. Hurry, there's no time to argue. Yes. The short answer is yes. That would have been better. This could have been an opportunity to kind of throw back to Temple of Doom, where Shorty leans against the rock and initiates the trap. But they would have taken five seconds to just catch their breath on the first platform, and Matt leans over something, and then you have at least a trigger for the stair. Yeah. 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 Or even like Mac could do like a stipi- uh, satipo and like, you know, oh, there's nothing to fear here. And then he steps on the wrong thing and all the yeah. stuff sure. start going away or something. Oh, is yeah. this gold? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, Mac, it's not gold. You're killing us all. <laughs> well, speaking of killing us all, Dave, thank you for being here. <laughs> Wait, what? No, Wait, what? Thanks that for having me. <laughs> um, I hope this has been fun. Um, I hope you don't fall down the stairs. It's going to be all right. You know. You'll, you'll be okay we'll all be okay it's been great thanks certainly yeah we're glad to have you here and um everybody this out there awesome. we're glad to have you here and um we hope you'll come back next time next week for minute 100 three digits oh my god minute 100 <laughs> of indiana jones and the kingdom of the crystal skull here on the indiana jones minute listen what? what? Is, that, is, that the only way, is that the only thing he says in this minute? He said, he goes, listen. Oh, he goes, hear that? Oh, hear oh, that. Yeah. Is it? Oh, then he say, I didn't, I didn't really get that. But then he says, get up, move, Ox, move. He's That's like, what I was listen, your song the, sta- the, the, stair, the stairs are, colla- are retracting. Is that a noise you can recognize? <laughs> hear that? <laughs> he the can. stairs are retracting. <laughs> listen, do you smell something? <laughs> <laughs> Is that naked gun? No, it's uh, Ghostbusters. <laughs> Are we still recording? Yeah, why not? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs>